Hello and welcome to PMC English. This is Aishi Farasi. So today in this episode, we have Dr. S. Ranjan, who is an MBBS doctor, an acupuncturist and healing energy physician. So today we will be in conversation with him on the topic lifestyle medicine. So Dr. Ranjan will be explaining us as to what is lifestyle medicine and how it can benefit us in the other aspects of it. So without any further delay, let's get into conversation with him. Welcome to PM Singh, Desh, sir. Thank you. So today's topic is lifestyle medicine. So we want you to elaborate a little about lifestyle medicine, like what is meant by lifestyle medicine. Lifestyle medicine is very recent development in mainstream medicine. Actually, it's uh, treating lifestyle as a therapeutic modality. Lifestyle in the simple sense, how we spend our time, 24 hours time how we talk, what we eat, how we sleep, how much we sleep. So there are five to six components in lifestyle medicine. There are various lifestyle practitioners. Few people, few researchers divide, use take uh, four component and some take five or some six. So the main component of lifestyle is what we eat, food, food is very important. In traditional medical approach, food has underrated. Nutrition is not that much important. There is traditional medical thinking that if you are taking the right medicine, that's enough. What you eat is irrelevant. It is not so. Now, medical establishment it has started to recognize the importance of nutrition. And here I will share one interesting story of Dr. Michael Greger. He is author of a book, How Not to Die. It is a very wonderful book to understand the importance of nutrition, right nutrition. What happened? Grandmother of Michael had some heart disease and it was of terminal stage. So doctor declared that uh, nothing can be done, uh, only few days are remaining. Take her home and do seva and uh, pray, that's all, we can't do anything. When doctor declared this, it's untreatable case, it's terminal heart disease. So family of Michael brought uh, the old lady to home. What happened after bringing to home that uh, there was a Prithikin diet system in USA. A non-medical practitioner was treating people by changing their diet. Family of Michael took uh, the old lady to him. He changed the diet and the main component of that diet system is that they, and they, he stops cereals, no cereals, only fruits, only vegetable, no animal product including the milk. And uh, there is a system of intermittent fasting. After following all these things, she recovered and she lived for two decades. For Michael, it was very surprising. What's happening? Qualified doctors are saying that there is no more life. Life is no more there. And she is living for so, so much long time. So, nutritional part in traditional medical approach is not correct. So he decided that I will become doctor and I will educate everyone. So for that purpose he became doctor. Okay. It's, his purpose is not to practice clinical medicine, not to see patient, but to educate people about nutrition. He has devoted his life to study the research. His book how Not to Die is a wonderful book to understand what food we should eat. And the most important part in what we should eat is the fiber. In our food, fiber, percentage of fiber is decreasing. We take lots of processed food. Processed food doesn't have fiber. It has minimal fiber. And animal food has zero fiber. And why fiber is important? because we have 
90% of our cells are bacteria, microbiome. It's surprising. Yes. For many people, that whatever cells we are feeling, only 10% have human cells. And there is a science journalist, Elana Collin. She has written the book, 10% Human. Quite surprising to know that. Yeah. So we have to take care of 90% bacteria in our body. Mm -hmm. And the fiber in our food, that is useful for microbiome. Fibers are there in vegetables, especially beans. Fibers are there in millet. There is Dr. Khadar Wali in Karnataka. And he is popularizing millet diet, millet lifestyles like anything. For last three decades. And a number of incurable disease, so-called incurable disease, has been healed by millet diet system. 14 types of cancer has been healed by millet lifestyle. Wow, amazing. So that's the importance of fiber. We have underestimated importance of fiber so far. Lifestyle medicine has started to recognize importance of fiber, right diet and plant food has fibers. So we all have to become vegetarian and we all have to become vegan as per lifestyle medicine. Right. Like grandmother of Michael, there will be many people who will be declared terminal cases by doctors. Yes. They need to understand there is no end of hope. Hope are always alive. But you have to shift to lifestyle medicine. Yes. There are very few practitioners of lifestyle medicine. I am one of them. In USA, there is American College of Lifestyle Medicine. In India, there is uh, some a small society of lifestyle medicine. There are no courses or college in which there is some course proper manner. But I am fully sure very soon, in near future, there will be courses and there will be colleges. Right. But uh, Dr. Ranjan, now when we see the lifestyle of people, yeah. they don't maintain a healthy lifestyle because they sleep late at night, they eat junk food and all. So when we see this lifestyle of people, how important it is for these generation and for these people and how can uh, lifestyle medicine benefit them? We have to understand that health need to be our first most priority. Yes. People take health as a granted. Right. When they fall sick, then they understand the importance of health that I need to take care of it. Right. And when first health is lost, you can't gain in its perfect way. You can restore up to some extent, up to major extent, but full restoration is never possible. Right. In Hindi we say, agar rasi toot jai, jodo to gaat rahi jai. You can't restore fully. So we have to take care of health on priority basis. Yes. And people are not aware in, in our society. It is this is our culture right. actually. We practice what our parents are practicing. We practice what we have shown in television. We practice what our peers are doing. Human is basically emotional being, right. emotional animal. We have herd behavior. We yes. follow the group, what other people are practicing. Right. Yes, when our consciousness elevates, that will be a different topic. The importance of consciousness. Then we start segregating ourselves from the group. We develop independent thinking. And then role of spirituality will pitch in. Yes. For that we will talk some other time. Uh, even understanding lifestyle medicine is so important. Beside food, we have to understand sleep. What's happening? In ancient days when there was no electricity, people used to sleep after the sunset. I have done my 10th from a village. There was no electricity. Till 10th, I have studied in natural light only. So, if you are using some artificial oil lamp, so you will hardly 
by 9 the village sleeps but in city since electricity is available and after coming in of internet and mobile we have forget the importance of natural biological cycle right in our body there are hormones and hormones follow a pattern biological pattern with sunset our body becomes more active digestive fire is more active when there is daytime in sleep time when we have to sleep we have to take rest some different phenomena happens in body level so we have to respect our biological clock in our pineal gland pineal gland is an important hormonal gland in our brain right. it secretes melatonin and it regulates our biological clock as we have clock in our mobile or in, on our wall yes. we have clock inside we should not abuse our biological clock we should sleep at right time, a fixed time, whatever is comfortable for one's uh, work requirement or profile. Yes. 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or hardly 11 p.m. Sleeping beyond 11 p.m. is not good. And for many people, it needs few minutes of time to fall asleep properly. Yes. So before falling asleep, last one hour or at least half an hour, you should not use mobile or any gadget, television or iPad or laptop. Okay. Because uh, we need slow down. We yes. need to be slowed down if uh, we are driving. We can't, after 40, we can't just immediately stop. Yes. We have to slow down the speed. If you will stop suddenly, uh, there will be breakdown. Yes. There will be accident. In our biological clock, in the same system. We can't fall asleep immediately putting our mobile inside. We need one hour time to slow down. Right. And in that one hour time, we can ponder upon our life. We can practice gratitude. We can practice meditation. In lifestyle medicine, there is a recommendation of meditation. As stress reduction, because now we are realizing that stress has role in every disease. Yes. All disease are psychosomatic. 100% diseases, 100% are psychosomatic. There is role of mind and role of stress. Right. If we can eliminate stress from our life, we can eliminate disease from planet Earth. If our mind is calm, we will not fall sick, there will be no fever, there will be no headache, there will be no abdomen indigestion. When we sleep, parasympathetic nervous system gets active and then proper digestion happens. In metabolism, anabolism and catabolism, there are two components. When our body is in resting condition, then anabolism process that is the body building process happens if we are awake for excessive time that process of anabolism that body building activity gets less time so we have to suffer sleep should be the first priority of every person if your work is disturbing your sleep change your work change your profession that's my recommendation to my every patient and my every listener. If the duration of the work, if schedule is such that, that it's affecting your sleep, or it's, if it's bringing you stress, then change your work. Because many people are doing the work, they are affecting their health and later on, when health gets compromised to that much level that you have to take leave and you have to visit to hospital to right. take care of yourself that's not a right approach yes the better way is take care of health do work in such manner that your health don't doesn't get affected yes. and then proceed for life 
Because nowadays everyone is doing the night shifts, the 12 o'clock shift, the 1 o'clock and then their sleep cycle gets disturbed because yes. again after one week they have to work in the morning yeah. hours. Their melatonin level gets disturbed. Right. And if melatonin is disturbed, your biological clock is disturbed, your hormone will be disturbed, your digestion will be disturbed yes. and then you will have headache, then you will have various internally hormonal imbalance level. Yes. Productivity will decrease. Your thinking capacity will decrease. You can't make right decision if your sleep is affected. Your immunity level drops. Even single night of sleep deprivation decreases IgAA level. IgA is one type of immunoglobulin. For our immunity, there are five types of immunoglobulin. They are immune medi mediator. So IgA, immunoglobin A, is the primary immunoglobin which fights for the infection. So just single night of sleep deprivation decreases IgA level by 40%. Okay. This has been researched. So we have to understand if you are compromising your sleep, you are compromising your immunity. And immunity affects our body in various manner. It is not just uh, infection you go and get in your abdomen and in your throat. Internally it has roles at so many places. There are so many cases of autoimmune diseases are popping up. In medical practices it is a quite uh, laughable situation that uh, when we are not able to control or manage there is a labeling of autoimmune disease. What autoimmune disease is that our own cells are fighting with our own cells. Immune cells need to fight to the exogenous cell. Ex means those uh, antigen which is coming from the outside. Some bacteria or some uh, foreign molecule. Mm. But when it gets confused, it uh, starts fighting with our own cells. And why this confusion is there? There are so many autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease, Hashimoto. Why? We, because we are confusing our body, our body cells. And there is also role of what we eat and right amount of what we put in our body. In Indian system, in our culture, Ahar, in the word of uh, food is ahar. Whatever we take, it is not just that macro food. What we listen, what we hear, what we absorb from our environment, everything comes in the category of ahar or bhog, that is Sanskrit word. So we have to take care of what we are giving to our body system. So uh, in autoimmune disease, from the lifestyle medicine perspective, there is a notion that we are putting the clutter, excessive clutter in our system. So if we can detox our body and we can detox our mind, we can heal autoimmune disease. And that's also fascinating because most of autoimmune disease has been declared that it can be cured. Understanding lifestyle medicine and shifting our focus on mind-body medicine and consciousness, we can understand there is no incurable disease. One of my favorite uh, mentor, Dr. Bernie Siegel, a retired surgeon. He was professor at Yale University. Okay. There are series of books by him and he says there is no incurable disease. In his guidance, n number of incurable diseases or where the prognosis was not sure has been healed because he done unorthodox thing. Okay. Lifestyle is important, sleep is important and food is important. Now that we understood what is lifestyle medicine and its access, if I just have to ask you that, uh, you know, what are the major causes of lifestyle diseases? If you can just elaborate us on that. 
the major causes which causes this lifestyle diseases yeah. taking uh, spirituality or consciousness in consideration it is ignorance ignorance of importance of sleep of food of not taking stress of body movement or exercise we have become very sedentary right our city culture our movement is very limited yes in lifestyle medicine there is recommendation of walking of 10000 steps for every human being but very few people are walking 10000 steps if there is active walking in your life or active walking routine then it's okay but most people are not walking that much they are not with that much active so here i will quote linda goodman a spiritual author she says walk as much as possible we what we have tendency that we seek comfort yes. we have to walk least but that's affecting your health walk as much as possible at least 10000 steps this 10000 steps can be correlated with half an hour of walk if one person does walking of half an hour then it's almost equal to 10000 steps deepak chopra writes in his book super genes deepak chopra is very influential alternative medicine practitioner that if someone can't give half an hour for walking he or she can jog or run for 15 minutes when we are jogging or running then in less amount of time we can do more movement yes and even someone is not able to do jogging or running we can practice active walking whenever possible that's taking stairs instead of lift don't put water bottles near your seat go to water cooler to drink water whenever you have to take water yes. that simple measure and in our indian culture we had practice of sitting on the ground we can practice at your home when we sit on the ground and when we stand at least one movement is happening yes so a small small things matter we have to be more active and those who are conscious they can practice yoga or exercise in lifestyle medicine they says exercise medicine if we can put exercise as a pill it will be most saleable pills right so exercise is important basically body movement is important we should not sit we are sitting excessively and we are sitting in wrong ma- manner Yes. Whenever we have to sit, we have to sit straight. Our spine should be straight. We take maximum comfort and luxury. Right. It's affecting our health of our spine. In our whole body, spine is very important. If our spine is straight, we will be healthy relatively for more time. Okay. So we have to sit properly. we have to sleep properly yes in yoga there is savasana hmm. we lie down in a straight posture yes before sleeping in the night we should practice savasana for 2 to 5 minutes in that way our posture will be right and then you can sleep in your way at least once your body will be straight yes this is a very basic thing but very important thing food sleep exercise and there is role of love yes there is one doctor dr dean ornis yes he is working to reverse coronary blockage heart blockage for last 40 years successfully he has proved that for reversing the heart blockage for healing the heart blockage medical intervention is not necessary 
by changing your lifestyle, even severe level of coronary blockage can be healed. He has published his uh, research work in almost all medical journal, in all reputed medical journal, like American Journal of Cardiology, JAMA, Lancet, Journal of American Medical Association is JAMA. Yes. And he has written book, Reversing Heart Disease. He call himself no doctor, no medicine, no surgery doctor. And interestingly, his lifestyle program, insurance company fund for his lifestyle program because it works, it is giving result. Yes. In Dr. Dean Ornish's lifestyle program, love, practicing love is very important. How you treat your fellow beings. We have to give love. And I will quote Louis Hay here, who says that before giving love, you need to practice self-love. So self-love and giving love. And it lengthens our telomere. Telomere is end part of chromosome. And there was Nobel Prize for research on telomere to Elizabeth Blackburn. And she has written one beautiful book, Telomere Effect. Very soon, every doctor will talk about telomere. In every disease, it shortens. It shortens naturally as well as per the due to aging process. But if there is any disease, it shortens rapidly. So, each part of lifestyle has been researched that what's its effect on the telomere length. Like practicing love, giving love, volunteering for some community service. Elizabeth Blackburn writes in her book The Telomere Effect. If you volunteer for some community work, if you help your neighbors, your telomere will be lengthy. It's very interesting. Yes. In spirituality, we say that you should serve the society. And it's coming in medical practice right. as a telomere, telomere effect. Okay. So practicing love, giving love is so important. If you are just concerned for our life, if you are being selfish, in our narrow mindset, we think that I will be well. But from lifestyle medicine research, from telomere perspective, you will be not well. You will be well if you will take care of your fellow beings, your community. So every person should take part in community work, in community service. And in PSSM, we call it do teach meditation, right. do service, spiritual service. It's very important from health point of view as well. Also, uh, Dr. Ranjan, we have been uh, hearing about prevention is better than cure. Yeah. So what is the difference between prevention and now that lifestyle medicine is coming? So what is the difference between both of them, the preventive method of this and the lifestyle medicine? Approach is same in prevention or lifestyle treatment. Yes. Prevention, when you are alert that I should sleep on time, yes. by 10 p.m. I will switch off my mobile and I will sleep after a little bit of meditation. If you are doing it before any medical call, yes. any recommendation by any lifestyle medicine practitioner, lifestyle medicine doctor, yes. then it's prevention. Yes. But if when you have some joint pain or back pain or some headache, and you are going to your doctor and if that doctor know about lifestyle very few doctor is aware of lifestyle medicine so far but if uh, by chance you visit lifestyle medicine practitioner and he or she will guide you he will write on your prescription sleep properly yes for headache patient i do write on prescription sleep properly 
meditate before sleep in lifestyle medicine the practice is same yes but when you are doing if you are going if you are doing all the things before going to doctor then it's prevention yes in the age of it in the age of google and youtube yes. everyone can educate themselves from about lifestyle medicine anyone yes. can read the book lifestyle medicine book book of dr michael greger dr dean ornis telomere effect are available yes. on amazon yes. anyone can read the pdf right anyone can listen talk of elizabeth blackburn these all researchers wants to help the humanity michael greger has devoted his life just to educate he doesn't see patient one can watch all the videos on youtube education is freely available when you are educating yourself on active manner it's prevention yes but when a doctor will tell you that you have to follow plant food you have to become vegetarian then it's treatment right lastly dr ranjan want to understand if we can reverse or you know if we can cure uh, all the diseases you know the big major diseases like cancer and, and any other diseases through the practice of lifestyle medicine there are various meanings of curing healing or reversing yes so the safe word is reversing dr dean ornis has reversed heart blockage and he is doing for last 40 years so heart blockage can be reversed dr neil bernard is reversing diabetes and for reversal of type 2 he has published his book diabetes reversal program and in india vishrup rai choudhury has published research article on reversal of type 1 diabetes kelly a turner she has published two book on her research that there are many natural cancer survivor who has reversed more than 100 cancer patient has reversed their cancer by natural approach by lifestyle medicine approach but there are no proper lifestyle medicine practitioner who are qualified who are licensed yes but many alternative practitioners are doing almost same kelly turner travel 10 countries to meet such healers who are doing out of box work and she researched what all they are doing she had pinned down nine factors in her first book radical remission yes and that seven factors are related to our mind and emotions yes one can say spirituality one factor is deepening spiritual connection another factor is decluttering your mind your emotional mind if there is any frustration or anger you have to relieve yourself so these all are lifestyle medicine only but they are not qualified lifestyle medicine practitioner so there are ample of evidence anecdotes anecdotes are those evidence which has been not verified by peers if other doctors evaluate itself and then it can be published in medical journal but yes there are an n number of cancer patient who have reversed their lifestyle diseases there are n number of autoimmune disease has been reversed ankylosing spondylitis is a one at autoimmune disorder one person got diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis and for ankylosing spondylitis there is no cure he had pain he researched by himself that what i can do and he found that laughter will help so he has started watching comedy movies okay and when he realized that when he laugh properly 
then he, he doesn't experience pain for next two hours. He, d he did research on his own body. Yes. And he healed his ankylosing spondylitis. He has published even book on his experience. So for no disease, anyone need to lose the hope. There is always, we always have a choice. Always there is hope. And every disease can be healed. And in uh, medical language, we can say we can improve quality of life in every case. Healing or curing is uh, some dicey word. When we have results on clinical level, on report level and on consistency level. For cancer, they, one has to supervise for 5 years. If 5 year survival is there, 5 year remission is there, then they will say in medical manner that is and we healed. For that, we need lots of support, lots of research work, investigation, documentation, publication of research. So, lots of work need to be done. But yes, practice of lifestyle medicine, mind-body medicine, reducing the stress, improving our diet, nutrition can reverse all disease. There is no incurable disease. My favorite word by my favorite doctor, Dr. Bunny Siegel. Thank you so much, Dr. Ranjan, for enlightening us on the topics that we never knew about through the wisdom that, you know, uh, people are not aware of and they keep on living a lifestyle which is very unhealthy for them. So thank you so much for giving us this wisdom today. And we will discuss more about the lifestyle medicine in the coming episode. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. So viewers, today we were in conversation with Dr. Ranjan and I hope that the wisdom that he has shared with us, how we can live a very healthy life and how we can prevent certain things in life so that we can lead a very healthy lifestyle. So I hope that this session would be helpful to all of you. If you have any queries, you can comment down in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching PMC English.